The trouble is that heart failure is what you die of. And already, 30% of the West healthcare spend is in the last year of life. Just think about that. So now we add another massively expensive treatment to that last year of life. We're going to double that. Modern medicine has prolonged not only our lives, but also our period of dying. Shortly after the artificial heart came in, um, Albert Johnson said this, that once you've stuck it in, it goes on working. What do you die of? You are now connected to an artificial heart, which, assuming that nobody turns off the power supply and you don't have a complication, just will go on wearing around. Now, I have a dream. Actually, it's a nightmare. This is my nightmare. <laughs> <coughs> He's a rich man. And um, he, or people like him, are likely at some point, uh, because of their stressful lives, to end up with heart failure. He's just as likely as we are, maybe a bit more likely. If he opts to have an artificial heart inserted as part of his treatment, so he can afford it, but he can't manage it on his own. He's got to suck in some resources to do that, nurses, beds, space. Um, what are we going to do when he's on that device? He may well say, leave me on it until you find a cure for cancer or a cure for dementia. But there are precedents. This was in 1950s when the polio epidemic was on, where warehouses full of people maintained on synthetic devices here, the iron lung, were built around the United States. Can you imagine a society where we put people onto artificial hearts that we can't turn off because they've told us we can't turn them off in advance? The Human Rights Act says that everybody's right to life should be protected by law and nobody should have be deprived of their life unless you're sentenced to death. A right to life is a moral principle and you shouldn't be killed by somebody else. So if I, as a doctor, turn up on that intensive care unit and turn the machine off, what is my legal and moral position? <laughs>